Hey everyone, so I'd like to continue talking about joints for just a little bit. Um, this is kind of a continuation of the first uh, online lecture for joints, and I wanted to talk about the different types of synovial joints that exist in the body. We talked about the general structure of a synovial joint last time, now we can talk about the different types. So one type is called a condylar joint, and a condylar joint exists when you have two bones that are attached, and um, in a condylar joint, the bones can move in every direction, but they can't spin, okay? So this bone can move like this, like this, like that, like that, but no spinning. An example of this would be the, um, the joint that connects your fingers to your, your hand. So the, um, the um, metacarpophalangeal joints right here. So your knuckles, so you can move your finger like this and like this, but you can't spin it, right? Same deal for your wrist, like, so if you hold your forearm steady, you can move your wrist like this, like this, or like this, but you can't spin your wrist, okay? That's actually um, allowed by um, motion of your radius and ulna, which we'll talk about later. Um, another example of the condylar joint is the joint between the most superior vertebrae, the atlas, and the, the skull. So this allows you to kind of nod your head back and forth and like this, but that joint's not responsible for the spinning. That's actually the joint between your first and second vertebrae, your atlas, and your axis, okay? Which leads us to that second type of joint, which is called a pivot joint, a joint that allows two bones to simply spin um, like this. So it allows one bone to spin next to another, but without any other motion, that's a pivot joint. You get that between the first and second vertebrae, your atloaxial joint that allows you to kind of shake your head like this and say no. Another example is the joint that connects your radius to your ulna. That allows your forearm to bones to slide past each other and cross, which allows you to, um, or allows the radius to spin next to the ulna, which allows us to turn our wrist like this. All right. Um, third, we've got a plane joint. A plane joint's pretty simple. That was, imagine if you have two bones, two short bones are a great example. Imagine each fist is a short bone. In a plane joint, these bones just slide past each other. Okay, so they just slide past each other and, and kind of as they, as they slide past each other. Okay, you'll find this within the bones of your uh, carpals. Right, so the bones of the wrist, the short bones of your, your wrist, the carpals, and also in your foot, so your tarsal bones will kind of slide past each other. You also will find plane joints um, within the vertebrae, so between each vertebrae, like the um, superior articular facet or process where it attaches to the inferior articular process of the vertebrae above it. Those vertebrae um, slide past each other as you move your spine, and, that, and that's a plane joint. Okay. Next, we're going to have a hinge joint. A hinge joint is a joint in which the bones can only move in one axis. So you have um, movement in one axis like this. The bones can't spin. They can't move in any other direction. They can simply go like this. Great example is your elbow. Okay, so your elbow, you can go back and forth. Okay, but you can't twist your, you know, you can't twist your elbow and you obviously can't move in any other axis. Other examples are your interphalangeal joints, so the joints of your fingers. These guys can bend in one direction, but you can't spin them. They obviously don't move in any other direction. Okay, um, You might think that your knee is a hinge joint, but it's actually a modified condylar joint. It's a condylar joint that's reinforced so strongly that you really only get motion in that one direction. Okay. Another example of a hinge joint is the joint that connects your talus to the distal ends of your tibia and fibula. Okay, and that allows your, your foot to kind of go up and down. So point your toes and then, or point your toes and then um, up and then point them down. Okay. Um, next, we're gonna have a saddle joint. A saddle joint is kind of unique. You only experience this in one. Um, a great example is, is where the first metacarpal of your thumb connects to your carpal bones right here, so at the base of your thumb. This joint allows two axes of motion, so the joint can go like this and at a 90 degree angle like this. So it's almost like a condylar joint that doesn't have all the flexibility. You can just go this way and that way. And you can kind of experience this if you try to roll your thumb and a finger, or roll your finger in a, a your, kind of move your thumb in a circular motion, you'll notice that it almost like clicks back and forth between this position, that position, and that position. That's because this joint right here is a saddle joint. It's gonna like click, 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 click. It's not really a smooth circular motion. Last, we have a ball and socket joint. This is our most flexible uh, synovial joint. This allows the bones to move in any direction and also spin. 
So and great examples of these are your shoulder and your hip uh, joints, okay? Next, I wanted to talk about the different ways in which we describe motions of our joints, okay? And this is great for kind of understanding how, how muscles work in, in the later chapters. So um, when you have a joint or you have two bones, and um, if the angle between those two bones decreases, so imagine these are two bones, um, and these guys are gonna produce an angle. As the angle decreases, that's called flexion. And as the angle increases, that's called extension. So in the case of the arm, you know, in order to flex the elbow, a flexed elbow is really gonna look something like this, okay? Like this person is flexing their muscle, and so they have this flexed appearance to their, their elbow, okay? Um, now, to extend the elbow, that would be increasing this angle. So to the extent that this is an ex example of an extended elbow that would look more like this, right? In which that arm is extended out and you can see that the angle has increased and the elbow is now extended, all right? So that's an example of that and that goes for the knee and any other type of um, joint that you might experience, all right? So flexion and then extension. Um, another way of describing joints um, at the shoulder in particular is so, or any limb, if a limb is brought away from the body, that's abduction. So in this case, this would be abduction of the shoulder, but extension of the elbow. So abduction of the shoulder brings that limb away from the body. Adduction is when that limb is brought closer to the body. So here's kind of an illustration showing that same, you know, off of the left arm of this person that now is being brought closer to the body as it kind of relaxes in this relaxed position. And that is called adduction, okay? So in this case, this person has adducted their arm and now their arm is obviously, you know, like closer to their, to their body, right? Now the forearm has some special kind of um, motions that are specific to that. So when your palms are facing forward and your thumbs are lateral, you'll notice that the radius and the ulna are in parallel. That's called supination. An example of a supinated left arm would look like this. Okay, so in this case, this person has, my black is failing me. Um, so in this case, no, oh, that's even worse. Right. Oh, much better. So in this case, this person has, has his kind of left arm facing forward, thumbs out, and so you'll see that this is a supinated, um, let me see, I'm just drawing these fingers so it looks somewhat accurate, All right? So fingers are kind of bent here. All right, so in this case, this person has supinated his wrist, and that's kind of what it looks like, right? So his, his palm's out. Now, in this position, the arm is facing like this, the two forearm bones are now crossed. That's called pronation. So pronation, the bones are crossed. Supination, the bones are in parallel. Okay. Um, in this case, this would be a supinated arm that's abducted. Okay. And in this case, actually making a fist, this is a little tricky. This is a flexed elbow that is Actually, in this case, I think that would be supinated, right? Making a fist, the two bones are parallel, they're supinated. Now, when the foot, when the toes are pointed up, okay, that's called uh, dorsiflexion, and when the toes are pointed down, that's called plantar flexion, okay? Um, oh gosh, I guess a quick picture of that would be, you know, if you're gonna draw a quick picture of a foot with the pointed toes, you would know that it's like this. I don't really plan on drawing this. But that would be plantar, that would be, excuse me. So we got the foot, it's kind of pointed like this. Got the ball of the foot and the big toe, the hallux, okay? And this is the calcaneus bone right there, right? We got the ankle, right? So that would be a quick, oh, that doesn't even look good at all. There we go, maybe like that. Well, you guys get the point, right? So that would be a dorsiflex foot. Okay, because the toes are pointed down. And then um, 
or excuse me, this would be uh, plantar flexion because the toes are pointed down. Now dorsiflexion is the exact opposite. We'd have the same ankle, but in this case, you're gonna the toes are gonna be pointed like this, right? It's gonna look like this. Much smaller foot, but that's all right. So in this case, you have the ankle. You're gonna have the ball on the foot. You're gonna have the heel, and then the big toe, which points up, kind of like that with the smaller toes. So in that case, that would be um, dorsiflexion, right? With the toe kind of pointed like that. And that's what I get for not making a guy. <laughs> it looks pretty bad. Anyways, all right. Then, so we've got um, dorsiflexion, plantar flexion. Now the last thing I wanted to talk about is how we can invert and evert our ankle. So. This is kind of the anterior straight on view of someone's foot, right? And so you got, you know, the big toe, you got the smaller toes, and you kind of draw them out, right? And the little toe. And what you'll find is that, you know, that's kind of the view of a foot that is relaxed, right? It's the head on view of, the, of this foot. Now we can kind of bend the bottom of the foot inwards. So this is the big toe. That's called inversion. Inversion is going to kind of look like this. So this big toe is kind of pointed inwards like that. And we got the little toes like this. All right, two more. And so you're kind of pointing that big toe inwards. And that's called inversion. And then you can point those toes outwards. And that's going to be eversion. And that's going to kind of look like this. So it's just kind of the opposite. You'll notice what I try to draw is that the ankle stays in the same position because this is all afforded by all those plane joints of the, of the foot, of the tarsal bones. Those muscles are going to pull against these plane joints and that's going to kind of deform the foot in either direction, right? So we got this, 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 and this, right? So immersion, regular resting position, inversion, okay? Man, and these feet over here, I just gotta change this one. This one looks so bad. Right? Let me try dors or plantar flexion again. So we've got like the ankle, right? And you have a better guide here, right? We got the foot right there, and this toe is pointed like that. Ball of the foot, kind of like this, right? Just to give you a better sense of what's really going on like a ballet dancer's kind of foot. Oh, that looks better. That's what I was missing. So it kind of comes down like this, and then you have the toe that's pointed like that, okay? And then you have the ball of the foot, and then the calcaneus bone right here. So it kind of comes in like that, which meets the ankle, and then goes up. That's a little bit better example of uh, plantar flexion. I guess the other toes would be like right here. Plantar flexion, dorsiflexion, and that's about it. Obviously you have rotation, like um, rotation. Another thing I wanted to mention is that this term hyperextension occurs when bones extend past their normal kind of resting extension. So hyperextension of the elbow is obviously a bad thing, and that would occur when these guys bend too much. All right, so a quick little kind of overview of the joints and how they move. Hopefully this was helpful. Let's try some like bicep. All right, thanks.